Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on guys? It is OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing an overview of the Sylph race. The Sylph race is insanely strong. However, it's insanely strong for whales. So I do not recommend uh, pursuing the uh, Sylph race or the Sylvian race, whatever you want to call it, unless you are um, like on the very top of the curve for, for your server or if you are like a whale a very big spender uh, because they require a lot of strength and it is not a beginning of the game type of race more on that later let's jump in and let's go over the, the different troops that self offers so the first type of troops that uh, self offers is actually going to be uh, huntresses Huntresses are actually fantastic troops uh, for tanking in the front line. Uh, there are two different types. You have the Zen and the Dire. The Zen will uh, give uh, bonuses to, to your other troops. The Dire just performs uh, better overall. So I think most people will go with the uh, Dire Huntresses. And what's cool about Sylph is they have two different frontline troops and both of them are good. Um, and they're good for different reasons. So the Huntresses are very good to put in front of your heroes to absorb a lot of damage just because of how the unit is built. And it's the only tanking unit for self to have uh, multiple units per pack. So uh, you can actually get quite quite a few Huntresses per pack uh, as opposed to their adversaries, uh, the trees. The next troop type that we have is going to be the archers. So uh, most of the races, the ranged units are really like the big highlights of, of that race. However, for Sylph, they, they really aren't. The archers can do a fantastic job and also offer a bunch of damage. Their unit size placement is actually awesome as well because it's a three by three cell, meaning you can place a lot of them. They're relatively easy to squeeze in, into your army if you want to use them. There's two different types. You have the Dire and the Zen. The Dire will, uh, uh, they, they really accent on the roots out there and um, th that's an awesome portion of them. However, the Zen ones also have faster attack speed by 20% and are immune to moral collapse. So it really depends on uh, what, what, what your play style is, who, who you're going up uh, against. I really like the Zen ones because they are immune to its moral collapse. And I, I think for a ranged unit, especially a humanoid one, I think that is huge. Now there is one reason and one reason alone to play as a self, uh, and that is because of trees. Trees are uh, for unit by unit, so one, one unit of trees versus one unit of anything else, they are the tankiest units in the game. They also uh, have a large area to place for one tree. It's going to be a three by three cell. There's a lot of units uh, for self that are three by three. And because of that, each tree really matters. Uh, so because they're just insanely tanky, but there's only one of them. Uh, so you're, you're never going to go out and have like 50 trees on, on the battlefield. Uh, so for PvP, you might have five, six, seven trees. For your, your garrison will, will have more, but each tree is uh, really, really important to, to keep alive. They do have insane uh, stats uh, as far as like tankiness and, and everything else. As far as the Zen or Dire, I would go with only the Dire trees because the Dire trees will actually summon a smaller uh, tree that can get boosted up by Gan as well. Uh, more on that when, when we cover Gan trees. They are um, amazing for self. They only become tanky once your troop equipment uh, gets high enough on them, your research is high on them, and your chakra is high on them. So they require a lot to make them tanky, but once they are tanky, they are going to be the tankiest unit in the game. Next, we have the shrooms. So shroom lords or shrooms are a really unique type of unit in the game. The shrooms will actually lob little AOE blobs over at the enemies, and it will hit, it will do some damage, um, and it will do AOE damage. So Going against things such as like uh, skeletons from Lich, uh, they're going to do a, a good amount of damage. They can also hit the back line fairly easily. Now, there's a couple other little things that, that make the uh, make the Shroom Lords really, really cool. So one of those things is they will summon little spores and these spores will run forwards towards the enemy and they will explode upon reaching the enemy doing a little bit of damage. Also, if they explode and they hit a magical unit that's yours, uh, so that's anything from uh, all of your troops besides uh, the, the archers. 
all of your shooters besides the archers, they'll actually get some more health and all, all that other cool stuff. They'll also like get bigger on the screen temporarily. Now, when it comes to Dire or Zen for, for the Shroom Lords, I would go with the Dire because they will offer uh, additional shields to really accent on the tankiness of, of your frontline troops. Shrooms, although they look like they do a ton of damage, they're almost more of a supportive type of role when, when, it, when it comes to fielding them for self. Um, they're, they're fantastic at, at, at what they do, but they're definitely very supportive to help ensure that your frontline holds. And finally, we have the uh, Mana Worms. So Mana Worms are, these are some of the coolest units in the game. They are insanely powerful. Although they, they don't seem like they offer much power, they are insanely powerful. So there's, uh, there's two different types. You have the Dire in the zen as far as the mana worms the dire mana worms and i i don't know which one's like better i think it really depends on on your setup because i've seen people use both uh, and have good success with both the dire mana worms will actually heal uh your your troops um which which is huge uh you want that that healing on your trees uh just to make them that much more more tanky however the zen mana worms offer a stun at the start it's kind of like having an uh, extra rufios on, on the battlefield for the start with the intimidating show they'll shoot out a blast it goes forwards it stuns up things and then they'll have reduced uh, attack speed for a period of time afterwards now where shrooms uh, uh, i'm sorry now where mana worms get really cool is they are hibernating which means that they are sleeping uh, I believe now that the patch is out in, in everything, once one minute of the, the battle has passed by, like after, after 60 seconds, the mana worm will uh, awaken. And when it wakes up, it will give everything of yours on the battlefield 100% more damage and 100% more attack speed. This is fantastic. It means that if you can weather the storm at the beginning of a battle, the mana worm, as long as it survives and is hibernating 60 seconds into the fight, is just going to make your whole army wicked, wicked strong, including your heroes. Speaking of heroes, we should go over some of the heroes for the Sylph race that are kind of key heroes. There's going to be a lot of key heroes for uh, all races and Sylph. We're not going to cover all of them in this video, but we're going to go over some really big ones. Uh, so this first one is actually going to be Lunella, and Lunella is kind of like the Huntress uh, hero, although she doesn't have like a, a direct um, connection to them as far as like a mastery. But what she does have is uh, under her phase shift is uh, she also gains evasion during its duration and is prolonged uh, for a, a period of time. So um, this is actually uh, pretty huge. It will give, um, it, it will just help to make everything more tanky. Lunella is, is a very important hero for Sylph. Probably the most important hero for Sylph that, that you can possibly have is actually going to be Gan. Uh, Gan is huge because other than the archers, um, everything for Sylph is going to be a magical creature and Gan has something called Nature's Blessing, which is going to just offer a ton of extra health uh, to all friendly magical creatures, which is all of your troops besides from the archers along with your dragon. Uh, there are a couple other interesting things with this. He has a tree mastery, so if you're fielding trees, which you should if you are playing self, and you should only play self if you're a whale, then this is just going to help with, with your trees. There is a plus one trinket for that. Make, make sure that you use that as well. And then there is called something, uh, something called life force. Life force will extend the duration of any summoned unit on the battlefield. This includes the, the mini trees that your dire trees will summon. So if you have dire trees and uh, they, they live long enough to summon like, like a mini tree, this will extend the duration that, that they're alive. Um, it can help uh, if your tree is getting heavily targeted and your tree is going to drop, this won't have a huge impact on it. However, on like your stall sides and stuff, it, it will help so that your main tree isn't absorbing as much damage. Uh, so, so if the mini tree is able to live for a period of time, they're just going to stay alive a lot longer with this. The more frontline units you can get on the battlefield with self, the, the better. So. If you have five trees and then each one summons mini tree, now, now you're up to like 10 trees, some big, some little. Uh, that's, that's better than only having five. The next hero that gets a honorable mention on this list is going to be Sprig. So Sprig is, uh, he has a mastery called Bow Mastery and Bow Mastery will boost up the damage of the archers. So I think that if you are fielding archers, 
Uh, I think it is important, uh, and this is true for all troop types. If there is a hero mastery available, uh, use that mastery. So if you field archers, then field sprig so that you can get the bonus for your archers. And of course, the last hero that we're going to go over for Sylph is going to be none other than Ophidia. Ophidia is huge, guys. Uh, Sylph, and we'll go over this more when, when we look at the actual battles, uh, for Sylph, most of their damage, uh, if not all of it, is going to come from your heroes. Now, there is nothing better than uh, being able to take out the backline of your enemies, and Ophidia does a fantastic job at that. So, uh, having Ophidia, using your Floral Blessing on your Ophidia um, when you're doing Sylph versus Sylph is actually super important as well. So, Ophidia, you're going to want to keep her alive. You're going to want to use her to her most powerful abilities because she is going to carry you for damage along with your Nora. Now, when it comes to uh, playing Sylph um, and, and the benefits of playing Sylph, the biggest benefit of playing Sylph is you are going to have uh, one of the, the coolest and strongest uh, front lines available as long as you can protect your, your, your trees. Uh, Sylph has the ability to um, fully crush things such as uh, skeletons from, from Lich just because of the AoE damage that comes out from, from the, the, the trees. They can actually do a pretty good job of tanking uh, anything really. So uh, they are probably the most defensive based race in the game uh, if we compare it to any of the other races. Trees are just absolutely insane. Um, now there are a lot of issues with uh, Sylph and some cons with them. So the cons are, uh, I've said this a few times and I stand by it, you have to kind of be a whale to play Sylph uh, to, to their full potential. Their trees require a ton of chakra, a ton of research, and a ton of, for the troop equipment in order to even be viable. If you're short on anything with the trees, your trees are just going to crumble. Uh, like this 15 million core power players trees going up against taint. Uh, so it's very important to, to be, if there's like a bell curve of, of players, you want to be ahead of others on, on your server if you even want to consider playing self. Um, one of the other big issues with, with self is your heroes are going to do most of the damage and do most of the work. Sylph is amazing at tanking, uh, however, they lack damage. So most of their damage is actually going to come from their heroes. That looks like your Cezeo, that looks like your Bazrix, your Ophidia, your Nora, all that type of stuff. Like You have to be on point with, with your heroes to be successful. If you have that though, then nothing's going to kill your trees and you're just going to walk right, right through the enemy. So it's... Uh, it is a really cool race. I've played Sylph for, for a long period of time. Um, I loved it when, when I did it. But if you go up against somebody that just has way stronger heroes or if they're able to start chopping down your trees, like in the replay above, uh, then it can end very, very badly. Uh, your heroes really do have to be on point or uh, at least above average against the people that, that you go against uh, in order to play Sylph uh, appropriately, in, in my opinion. Now, one of the uh, one one of the big things that will benefit you as a as a self player is actually going to be uh, if you want to play as defensive as possible is running with an Azure Dragon with Noble Blood. Uh, so Noble Blood will allow 0.9% uh, of uh, max health healing for all of your stuff on the battlefield. That's your heroes. That that's your uh, troops. That's everything. Trees have really high health, uh, so that essentially 1% healing per second adds up uh, very, very fast, especially when you uh, have healing received bonuses onto your trees, um, when the dragon has higher healing efficiencies, making noble blood more powerful. Um, the trees can do a really good job at, at healing. So it's a, it's a pretty unique uh, race in that sense, uh, but this race is not for everyone. The other drawbacks with, with Sylph, and I feel like there's a lot more drawbacks with Sylph compared to other races. Um, there is a very long period of time uh, to train and heal your troops. Uh, it takes in an, it, what feels like an eternity to build a single tree, especially once that those trees are high levels. Like it, it's... You're talking about like a day a tree. It, it, it's ridiculous. Um, same thing with, with healing them. So if your garrison gets fully destroyed, a self garrison to heal from zero to 100% is going to take forever, uh, weeks. It, it, it's wild. So I think self is, um, is a great race. 
uh, it's a great whale race uh, because they counter all of that AOE very well. So uh, if we look at things like True Ruby Noras, the, what a True, Nor, True Ruby Nora specializes in is killing like cluster based races. That That's everything but Sylph, really. Uh, so I think that Sylph offers a lot of uh, protection because you, you need very high single target damage in order to take down the trees. Warlocks tagged on a tree will probably take down the, the, the tree or snipers. Um, so things that have very high single target damage are going to just uh, hopefully be able to chop down trees. Things that do massive AoE, such as like your Noras, which Nora is so impactful, they are going to struggle going up against Sylph. So if you are interested in a uh, like a solid game being as tanky as possible, then then Sylph could 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 be for you. That is a, a, a race to consider. But please keep in mind this is not something I, I don't think any free to play player is going to do super well at, as Sylph ju just because of the uh, insane requirements in order to do well. So I, I would highly recommend hold this race um, up until you are able to be a, a whale or at least on, on the uh, cutting edge of progress, if that makes sense. So that is uh, so, so uh, overall, I, I think that the, uh, the the best thing that you can do to counter Sylph is they're going to re rely very heavily on their heroes in order to do damage. So I think that if you're able to kill their Ophidia and their Gan, you're going to really... Uh, Killing their Gans are going to make all of their trees weaker. So, so that, that, that one's a no-brainer. That's going to help you out. Ophidia, uh, because Sylphites tend to go on for a long period of time, meaning Ophidias can pump out a, a ton of damage. Ophidia is going to just destroy your backline while Sif, Sylph holds their front line. So I think killing their Ophidia is also very big. And then just their, their dragon. Because so, so much of their damage comes from uh, heroes and dragons. That should be the, the primary focus. If you're able to get your uh, Rufio leap in on the self power side and stun up all of their high DPS heroes like their Nora, their Ophidia if they place them over there, their Cezeo, their Jax, that, that type of stuff. If you're able to stun them up with your um, with, with your Rufio, do that. That's going to just really kind of cripple their Sol side. Otherwise, an Earthquake on, on their uh, power side uh, is also super effective. So um, I love Sylph. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not strong enough hero-wise to, to play them, and I'm decently strong. So I think that this is definitely a like an elite type of level uh, race. So with that, guys, uh, that is Sylph overall. I hope you guys enjoyed this week with all, all of the uh, uh, races and kind of a basic overview of them all. So if you guys don't mind, smash the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Go check out the description of this video and all the videos so you guys can see all the cool stuff. Uh, we got the Facebook, the Discord, uh, we have Merch Store, we got Patreon page. Thank you very much to the Patreons out there, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care.